Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. In this lecture we shall be studying the sixth most important uh, type of sutras namely the Adhikara Sutra which is which can be generally understood as the domain indicating statement in the grammar of Panini. What is an Adhikara? The definition provided explains the concept of Adhikara. There are two definitions provided. First one is Swadeshe Vakyartha Shunyatve Sati Uttara Sutra Ekavakyataya Arsadhi Janakatvam. A statement which generates the meaning by getting one with the <coughs> sentence that is available from the subsequent sutra when the sentence meaning in the place where the sutra is stated is 0. So, Deshe Vakyartha Shunyat Vesati. This definition captures the functional approach of the definition the core featural definition of adhikara is provided in shabda sutra which says granthopa grantha vishaya nirdharaka shabdaha adhikaraha that statement which determines the domain of the sub sections and the main chapter or main section of the book granthopa grantha vishaya Nirdharaka Shabdaha. This is the meaning of Adhikara. What this Adhikara helps a student understand is an important feature of the learning which is called Vyutpatti. And the term Vyutpatti is defined once again in the Shabda Sutra as Grantho Deshadnyata with Patihi. The state of being knowledgeable about the contents of the work is called Vitpatti. So, by knowing the Adhikaras, we come to know about the contents of the work. So, a particular sutra coming from a particular section, you will easily recall what kind of Adhikara this sutra comes in. This sutra is governed by and that will facilitate you to have an overall understanding of the sutra, overall functioning of the sutra. So, the ability to know which topic is dealt with where in the text and the study is what is known as Vitpatti, one of the important features of the traditional learning and Adhikara facilitates this Vitpatti. I should say the knowledge of Adhikara facilitates this Vitpatti. So, Hereafter, we shall be taking a panoramic view of Ashtadhyayi by looking at important Adhikaras stated in the text of Ashtadhyayi. We start with 1.1 and the one Adhikara that is not stated by Panini but is stated by the commentators is Saudhnyayam. So, this 1.1, there are lots of Saudhnyas that are termed that are stated. And therefore, Katyayana suggests that there should be this Adhikara Saudhnya. So, here are the Saudhnyas that are discussed in 1 1 Vriddhi, Guna, Sanyoga, Anunasika, Savarana, Pragriya, Gu, Gha, Nishtha, many of which we have already studied when we studied the technical terms, the Saudhnyas. Then there is this Sarvanama Saudhnya and Avyaya Saudhnya. This is also what we have already studied. They are all stated in 1 1. There are 35 words which are part of the group which is called Sarvanama. So, this is the definition by enumeration. So, also is the case of Avyaya, a definition by 
enumeration. The 35 words in the Sarva Nama group are Sarva Vishva Ubha Ubhaya Datara Datama Anya Anyatara Itara Tvatva Nema Samasima Purva Paravara Dakshino Tarapara Dharani Vyavasthaya Masaudnyayam Swamadnyati Dhanakhyayam Antaram Bahir Yoga Pasam Vyana Yoho Tyad Tad Yad Etad Yad Madas Ekadvi Yishmadasmat Bhavatu Kim All these Sabnyas are part of one one. Then the Adhikara in 1.2, there are two important Adhikaras. The first one is Gnit from 1 to 1 to 1 to 26. An element having Na as marker is called Gnit. This property is extended to other elements which do not have this property. And this is what is described in this big section. One of the sutras we have already seen is Sarvadhatu Kamapit which falls into this particular section. This is an extension which is stated and Adhikara which covers the extension. This is a unique example. The second important Adhikara in 1.2 is Ekashesha, one remaining. So there are several elements stated out of which only one remain. And here is one example. This is an example of 1264 Sarupanam Ekashesha Ekavibhaktau. What it says is in immediately before the same vibhakti, one of the two forms remains. So if you have Rama Rama Au, Au is the dual suffix and here we have two Ramas. So one of them is deleted and the one remains. So Rama Rama Au and you will get only Rama plus Au which will result in Rama Similarly, when you have a compound like Matru plus Su plus Pitru plus Su and so Su gets deleted Matru plus Pitru. Now amongst these two, only this one Pitru remains, One, this one gets deleted and so the final resultant form will be Pitru. So when you say Pitarau, as Kalidasa says, Jagata Pitarau one day. So Pitarau means Mata Pitarau. This is what is stated in this section. Pita Matra, that is the sutra which appears in this section. When we go to 1.3, the first adhikara that we see is it, 1.3.2 to 8. So it is a marker. We have already studied in detail all these sutras, starting with Upadeshe Ajanunasikait, Halantyam, Navibhaktauta Smaha, Adir Yitudavaha, Tapratyayasya, Chutu, Dashakvatadhite. And then finally, Tasya Lopaha. The next important Adhikara in 1.3 is Atmane Padam. From 1.313 up to 1.377. Long Adhikara. So this Adhikara states a set of suffixes to be added. One, in order to denote certain meanings, Bhava and Karma together with karta and after a specific kind of roots or specific kind of root plus preverb combination. Then from 78 to 93 there is an adhikara parasmai padam, a set of suffixes to be added, one in order to denote certain meaning namely karta, only karta and two after a specific kind of roots or a specific kind of root per plus preverb combination. Remember these two adhikaras do not state what is Atmanipada and what is Parasmaipada. They state when Atmanipada suffixes are to be used and when Parasmaipada suffixes are to be used. So the answer when should we use Atmanipada? When should we use Parasmaipada? The answer to these questions you will find in these two sections. What is Atmanipada? What is Parasmaipada? You will not get the answer of these two questions over here. That is given by the Saudhnya Sutras which we have already seen which appear in 1.4. Now when we go to 1.4, here are three important Adhikaras. The first one is Akadara Deka Saudhnya, the very first Sutra which says 
that one element stated in this section gets only one term. This adhikara governs the entire 1, 4, 2, 1 and 2, 2, 3 padas, 3 subsections. Now, if it so happens that by definition that element gets two terms, two saudnyas, then the one stated by a later rule prevails over the earlier stated one. This is stated by 142, a very important sutra which talks about the conflict resolution principle stated by Parnini himself, although in a limited domain. The tradition applies this principle everywhere in the Ashtadhyayi, though. The next important adhikara in 14 is Karake from 1423 to 55, in which the roles, the entities are thought to possess the capabilities of playing in the accomplishment of action are described. Shakti buddhihi karakam given by Shabda Sutra. Nipataha, that is another adhikara from 1456 up to 98. This covers the groups of words included in Chadi and Pradi and those which are termed Upasarga and Gati and also Karma Pravachaniya. All of them they are called Nipatas. All the Nipatas are termed Avyaya by Swaradi Nipatam Avyam which we saw earlier. When we go to 2.1, we have an Adhikara Sup which is stated in the second rule which goes up to 2 to 20, 38. So, 2 subsections, 2 padas. Then there is Sahasupa stated in 214 which goes up to 2 to 38. Samasaha from 213 up to 2 to 38. What it means is if there is a pada at the end of which sup appears and if there is another pada at the end of which another sup appears and if they are semantically linked then the resultant form could be a samasa. So these two sups, subantas, they are the primary conditions for a samasa to happen. If it is the condition that in this pada there is no sup over here but there is a sup over here then this does not qualify to be called a samasa. This is what these adhikaras tell us. The basic condition for samasa is to minimum two sups, two words ending in sups. This is the minimal, this is the basic condition. What it also implies is that padas are the input for the compounding process. What it also implies is that compounding is a process based on the sentences. Sentence is the input, compound is the output. In 2, 1, we also have two other specific adhikaras of compounds. The first one is avyayi bhavaha from 215 to 2121. What this means is that if the first word amongst the two getting compounded has got an avyaya as a pratipadika and a sup followed, and then there is another element with a sup, then such a compound is called avyayi bhava in general. This is what happens. And is an Tatpurusha compound which is stated from 2122 which goes up to 2222. The major point is that the two Subantas which are available out of them, the second Subanta, the meaning of the second Pada is prominent and then such a compound is called Tatpurusha by default. This is what is the meaning of these two adhikaras, avyayi bhava and tatpurusha. Then we go to 2 2, the important adhikara is bahuvri, where bahuvri compound is stated from 2 to 23 to 28. And the important point over here is that there are two sups which are getting compounded and there is one more word with a sup outside of this compound and this non-compounded word outside of the compound this word becomes prominent. So this is the qualificant, this becomes a qualifier. Such a compound is called bahuvri. This is what this section primarily tells us. Then we go to 2, 3. The adhikara is anapihite and this governs the entire pada. What it means is when not expressed, 
when the karaka is not expressed by a thing mainly primarily then it is expressed by dvitiya tritiya chaturthi panchami saptami and shashti we have already seen this when we studied the karaka and abhidhana systems prathama is added to a pratipadika whose karaka is already expressed by a thing mainly then we go to 2.4 there are three important atikaras stated in 2.4 one of them is ekavachanam 2.4 to 16 the number of a specific kind of dvandva compound gets singular number the dvandva compound prescribing sutra comes in 2 to 2 to 29 only one sutra therefore it was not mentioned as an adhikara now this is an adhikara which mentions the number of a peculiar kind of dvandva compound then we have another important adhikara called ardha dhatuke from 2435 to 57 which means immediately before an ardha dhatuka suffix certain substitutions take place for example astir bhu 2452 what it means is when you have as as a verbal root to which is added the suffix t which is an ardha dhatuka by definition then in the environment of this t as gets replaced by bhu so the next step we get is bhu plus t and so we derive the form bhut similar such rules are stated in this particular section the third important adhikara is look that is deletion from 2458 up to 2484 so in the process of derivation of a compound as we saw earlier we need two words ending in subs this is a sub this is a sub and now 2471 applies and deletes this sub so what we have is only the left hand side the prakriti part left over here this is what gets constituted in a samasa or a compound then we go to 3 1 and the major adhikara is pratyaya that starts from 3 1 1 and goes up to 5 4 1 60 the next adhikara is paraha which is a qualifier of pratyaya also the same range adudattaha also qualifies pratyaya same range so these three adhikaras they govern the entire three chapters 3 4 and 5 and this is why this particular section of three adhyayas is called vidhi as we have seen earlier when we studied the vidhi type of sutras in the ashtadhyayi what this means is that this is how the sentence this is how the sentence is structured so you have left hand side which is a prakriti and right hand side is pratyaya now which pratyaya will be coming over here that is stated in this particular section and which prakriti that is also stated in the section for example dhatoh is another adhikara important adhikara 3191 up to 34117 this adhikara tells us that this slot left hand side is filled by a dhatu which is a prakriti so we have dhatu plus pratyaya plus dhatu plus pratyaya plus dhatu plus pratyaya that seems to be the case in this particular template <coughs> the next important sub adhikara within the pratyaya adhikara is kritya and these are kritya types of suffixes so from 3195 up to 132 we have the kritya adhikara so what this means is that the suffixes that are added after a dhatu in this section they are kritya pratyayas all of them dhatu plus kritya pratyaya so this pratyaya slot which is a generic slot is now filled with kritya pratyaya and then there are specific kritya pratyayas like y tavya aniya etc they all replace these generic template generic slots what this means is that from 3191 the left hand slot is filled in by a prakriti called dhatu so we have dhatu plus pratyaya etc and so we have examples like rama verbal root plus ghai kru plus tavya and kru plus ti and so we get the forms rama which is a pratipadika kartavya which is a pratipadika kriti is a pratipadika and karoti which is a tinganta form what this also generates is dhatu plus pratyaya and a pada is generated or 
dhatu plus pratyaya and a dhatu is generated. Similarly, dhatu plus pratyaya and a pratipadika is generated. All this is governed in this particular section. The adhikaras in 3.2 are these two. Bhute, 3.2.84 to 122. So, bhu plus ta, the suffix ta is added in the sense of past tense. And so, we get the form bhuta, one who existed. Similarly, vartamane is another adhikara, meaning condition. 3.2.123 to 188. So, bhu plus let, let is stated in the sense of present tense, let gets substituted by t and then there is a which comes in between and so finally we get the form bhavati. Bhavati means he, she or it exists in the present tense. There is one more adhikara, tat shila tat dharma tat from 134 to 176. These are the additional shades of meanings that are available and we shall explain them when we talk about the accents in the next lecture. Then there are these three adhikaras in 3.3, three, Bhave from 3.3.18 three, to 1.30, Akartari Chakarake Saudhnyayam, same range and Striyam 3.3.94 three, to 1.07. So let us take the example of Striyam, here we have the verbal root kru to which we add the suffix ti which means bhava and which also means stri. So, kriti is a feminine form which means the action of doing. Mati is the feminine form which means the action of thinking. Gati is the feminine form which means the action of going. All such words are derived in this particular adhikara. Then we go to 3.4. The important adhikara in 3.4 is lasya which governs the section 3477 to 117 and this is how the forms get generated in this particular derivation using the sutras which come in this adhikara. So, bhu plus lat and then lat gets substituted by t by 3478 and then there is a which comes in between 3168 and then the other rules apply and we get the form bhavati. So, t comes in into this section. So, so, T comes in the derivation because of the sutra which appears in this particular section and so you have all the forms of all 10 lakaras and their substitutions which are stated in this particular section. Next we go to 4.1 and here we have some important adhikaras. For example, Nyap Pratibhadikat from 4.1.1 to 5.4.160, a huge adhikara covering two adhyayas, striyam for from 413 to 77, striyam. The suffixes stated in the sense of feminine gender, they are stated in this particular section. Then we have an important adhikara, 4176 to 54160, taddhitaha. This is also a big adhikara. So, taddhitas are the pratyayas, we have already studied them. Then there is a sub adhikara within the taddhitas namely an which goes up from 4183 to 442 and apatyam for is the meaning condition which governs the sutras stated in between 4192 to 176. These are the adhikaras and what this means is that if this is a generic slot filled in by the adhikara pratyayaha like this. Then from 411, the left hand slot is filled in by a prakriti called pratipadika, and so we get pratipadika plus pratyaya and so on. So, Rama plus Ghai, this was the earlier dhatu plus pratyaya, this was also dhatu plus pratyaya, this was also dhatu plus pratyaya. Now, next we have Rama plus Su, Rama is a pratipadika to which is added a pratyaya. Kartavya is a pratipadika to which is added a pratyaya. Kruti is a pratipadika to which is added a pratyaya. These sutras are stated in this particular section. This is what this adhikara means. So, in a nutshell, what we have is pratipadika as an input to which is added a pratyaya, and so we derive pada as an output. Similarly, pratipadika as a, as a prakriti and pratyaya 
which is added to it, and we derive another pratipadika. Taddeta suffixes are such. Then we have pratipadika plus pratyaya, and we get pratipadika plus pratyaya. They are neither pratipadikas. They eventually become pada, but these are the feminine forms, which are not termed as pratipadika by Panini. So this Taddhita Adhikara continues up to the end of 5.4. So we won't go into the details of this Taddhita right now. We will go straight away to 5.4 and there is an important Adhikara, Samasantaha, stated in 5.468, which goes up to 5.4160. In this section, several suffixes which are added to a compound are stated. Here is an example. So when we compound these words Mahatsu, Rajansu, we have to derive the word Maharaja and this is how we derive it, Mahatsu, Rajansu and then the suffix touch is added which appears in this section, Rajah Sakibhyash touch. Then we have Su deleted by a sutra in the Adhikara look, Chupodhatu Pradipadika Yoho 24 and 71. So we get Mahat plus Rajan plus A and then this the gets substituted by a, maha a rajan a, maha and this an gets deleted, maha raj a, finally we get maha raja. So now the original word is rajan which is reduced to raja. So we see this a coming at the end figuring in the word maha raja. This is the importance of the samasanta suffix. Then we go to 6.1. The main adhikara in 6.1 is samhitayam. 6172 up to 158. What it means is when in close proximity, do what? Do the substitution of sounds in the given conditions. Another important adhikara in the same section is Ekah Purva Parayoho from 484 to 114. What this means is one substitute in place of two, earlier and later. So if we have this condition A plus B, then in place of both of them we have C. What it means is that if there is a sequence at the end of which A appears and if there is another sequence of words at the beginning of which B appears, then in place of this A and B you get C. The remaining part remains the same and then you get C in place of both these A and B. Before this from 72 up to this 84 there are two sutras which are stated which do not do this where A plus B gives you the output namely C plus B. The next important adhikara in 6.1 is Sut stated from 135 to 157. So here is an example. So you have some plus crew plus the, the is added after the verbal root crew to which this crew Su is added, some paribhyam karotau bhushane. A sutra appearing in this section. So this sa is added to this crew. So now we have some plus sa crew ta, and we get the word samskrita derived by in this particular fashion. Then the important adhikara is anta udattaha from 61159 to 223. What this means is final vowel is accented. Then we have another important adhikara samasasya which is stated in 61223 and is go, goes up to the end of 62, 62199. What this means is by default final vowel of a compound is accented. So there is no other important adhikara in, sama, in 62. So we go directly to 6.3 and here there are a few adhikaras. One is Uttarapade, 631. It goes up to the end of 63. What this means is immediately before an Uttarapada. So if we have this condition ABC plus sup where C appears at the end plus another Prakriti and sup. What this means is that in the condition of this sup, this C gets substituted by D. So this is an Uttarapada. In the environment of Uttarapada something happens to the Purvapada. This is what this Uttarapada Adhikara means. Then we have aluk adhikara from 631 to 24 which means non-deletion of the sup. So if we have this situation where abc plus sup plus 
a prakriti and soup then this soup is supposed to be dropped deleted but this is not deleted on account of the sutra stated in this particular section and this is the output that we get and several examples exist words like yudhishthira and so on they are examples of this section. Then the important adhikara is samhitayam once again from 63114 up to 138. Then we also have another adhikara dirghaha from 63111 up to 6418 and here the adhikara crosses over into another subsection, another pada. The example is this, we have Vishwa plus Mitra and so Mitre Charshav is the sutra which appears in this section which says that immediately before an Uttarapada which is Mitra substitute this short vowel by a long vowel. So Vishwa plus Mitra becomes Vishwa plus Mitra and the result we get is Vishwa Mitra if and only if this word qualifies a Rishi and it is if it is a Saudhnya. The most important Adhikara in 6.4 is Angasya and this governs the 5 subsections 6.4 and the entire 7th chapter. It goes up to the end of 7.4, 7.497 and the other Adhikaras are Asiddhavadatra Abhat as well as Bhasya. So what is an Anga? We have already studied this. Yasmat pratyaja vidhis tadadi pratyaye angam. That verbal element x at the beginning of which comes y to which is added a pratyaya by prescription immediately before a suffix pratyaya is called anga. So if you have y plus pratyaya in this case y is equal to x that is an anga. And if you have y plus pratyaya plus pratyaya in this case y plus pratyaya is x that is an anga. So for example, Rama plus Ghai, Kru plus Tavya and Kru plus T, also Kru plus U plus T and Kru plus U plus T, we have these Angas. In case of Rama plus Ghai, Rama is an Anga, Kru plus Tavya, Kru is an Anga, Kru plus T, Kru is an Anga because these suffixes are stated after these Prakritis, these Dhatus. In case of Kru plus U plus T, Kru is an Anga with reference to U. But with reference to T, Kru plus U, this becomes an Anga. Now we get the outputs of these and Rama is the output of this, Rama plus Ghai. Now Rama becomes an Anga when Su is added to it. So with reference to Su, Rama becomes an Anga. With reference to Su, Kartavya becomes an Anga. With reference to Su, Kruti becomes an Anga. Karoti is not an Anga. Karoti is a Pada. What is a Bha? So when we have this situation Pratipadika plus Pratyaya, in this case first omit the first 5 Pratyaya stated in 412. Now from the remaining ones from 412 up to 54160 a vowel beginning and amongst the consonants Y beginning, Y beginning Pratyaya follows then the Pratipadika is called Bha. So this Pratipadika is called Bha if this Pratyaya is of a peculiar kind. This Pratyaya should belong to this list omitting the first five. This pratyaya should be a vowel beginning and this pratyaya should be if at all it is a consonant beginning then it should be year beginning. Then this pratipadika will be called bha, a subset of anga. Now in this list of subs the ones in blue they are the suffixes which are vowel beginning suffixes. They cause the previous pratipadika to be termed as bha. The red ones they are consonant beginning but not year beginning so they cause the previous Pratipadika to be called Pada and all of them they cause the previous Pratipadika to be called an Anga. So here are examples Marut plus As, As is 2, 3 so As is a vowel beginning suffix and the sixth suffix stated in 412 so Marut is called Bha so we get the form Marutaha. Now when we go to Marut plus Bhyam which is 3-2, Bhyam is a consonant beginning suffix 8th one stated in 4-1-2. So Marut is not called Bha, it is called Pada and so Ta gets replaced by the by Jhalam Jashonte which is governed by the Adhikara Padasya and so we get the form 
Marudbhyam. Similarly, when we have Rajan plus us, us is obviously 2, 3. Now 6, 4, 1, 34 applies and this a uh over here gets deleted. So we get Raj, N, us. Finally, we get the form Rajna. This is because this is a B. Whereas if you have Rajan plus Bhyam, this is a consonant beginning suffix. So this does not get the term B. Instead, it gets the term Pada because of which 827 applies and this N gets deleted. And so we get the form Raja plus Bhyam, Raja Bhyam. So here are the forms of Rajan in which the blue ones indicate that they are caused using the term B and the red ones are generated using the term Pada. Now let us go to quickly to the Adhikaras in 7.1. Num is an Adhikara, is an augment and we have seen the Paribhasha Sutras which tell us where the augment with the marker Ma is to be added, namely immediately after the final vowel. So here is a sutra Napum Sakasya Jhala Chaha 7172 because of which num is added to vana in this particular case. Vana plus jas, just gets substituted by she. So vana plus e we have and now this num is added after the final vowel over here. So we get vanan plus e. Then this a gets lengthened. Vanan plus e we get the form vanani which is one three. Vanam vane vanani. Vanam vane vanani and so on. So this entire section 58 to 73 deals with this num. Now we go to 7.2, there are two important adhikaras to be remembered. One is it which starts with 7 to 8 and goes up to 78. So here is an example, patha plus the and since this is an ardhadhatuka suffix, so ardhadhatuka said vala dehe, 7 to 35 applies and so we get patha plus it, it is added to this the. And we know by the Paribhasha Sutra that the augment with the marker T is added before. So we add it here. So we have Pata plus Ita and we get the form Pathita. The next important Adhikara is Vibhaktau, immediately before a Vibhakti from 7 to 84 up to 113. So example is Tadadina Maha. So when a Vibhakti suffix follows, substitute this Tyad etc. by A. So we have yad which is a tyadadi, yad plus su, this is a vibhakti. Then this the becomes, the gets substituted by a. So we have ya, a, sa, ya, sa and ya. The important adhikara in 7.4 is abhyasasya, in place of part of the abhyasa. So the rule is haladi shesha 7.460 which says that only the initial hal that is a consonant of the abhyasa remains. That means others get deleted. Here is an example. So we are deriving the perfect forms of patha, lit lakara. So patha plus ti and lit, patha plus ti, patha plus a. Now we get the reduplication of patha. So we have patha patha a. Now this part is defined, this part is called abhyasa by definition, purvo abhyasaha. This is the abhyasa. In this abhyasa, there are two consonants, p and t. Haladi Sheshaha says that only the initial consonant remains. That means this t gets deleted. So we have p, pat, a, then this a gets lengthened, and we have p, part, a. Finally, we get the form p, pat. Then we go to 8.1, and the adhikara is padasya, from 8.116 to 8.355. And then Padat from 8171 to 74 and Anadattam Sarvam Apadadav from 8118 to 74. So what is a Pada? We have already seen this, Suptingantam Padam, a verbal element at the end of which appears a sup or a thing is called Pada. What is a sup? A set of suffixes stated in 412. What is a thing? A set of suffixes stated in 3478. These are the sups for you, we have already seen them. And these are the subanta forms, so these are called the padas. These are the things for you, 18 suffixes, we have also studied them and the red ones are the final elements. And these are the tinganta forms also known as pada by the definition. 
Now the Adhikaras in 8.2, very very important, very very crucial. The Adhikara is Purvatra Siddham. I mean this Adhikara governs the entire three subsections, 8.2, 8.3 and 8.4. It goes up to the end of 8.4. What this means is that the rules stated in these three subsections are non-existent for the rules stated in the earlier 29 subsections. And two, the rules stated earlier in these three subsections are also non-existent for the rules stated later on in these three subsections. What this means is that the output of the rules in these three subsections cannot be the input for the earlier 29 subsections. And two, the output of the latter rules in these three subsections cannot be the input for the rules stated earlier in these three subsections. This is, for, this is a unique construction as far as the text of Ashtadhyayi is concerned. So what this means is three sub chapters 8.2, 8.3 and 8.4 are non-existent for the rest 29 sub chapters appearing before. Each subsequent rule in 8.2, 8.3 and 8.4 is non-existent for a previous rule or rules. The last rule 8.4.66 is non-existent to the entire grammar. The output from these rules cannot be an input for earlier rules. In case of rule conflict, earlier rules overrule the later rules. These are the meanings of the Adhikara. These are the implications of this Adhikara Purvatra Asiddham. Here is an example, no retroflex in Kurvanti, this is the derivation. So we have Kru plus Lat, Kru plus Anti, then U comes in, Kru plus U plus Anti, then Kar plus U plus Anti, Kur plus U plus Anti, then we have Kur plus V plus Anti and now 8.3.24 comes in and applies and converts this Na into an Anuswara, Kurvanti and 8.4.58 comes in and substitutes na in place of this anuswara and we get the form kurvanti. Now looking at this form, one wonders why 842 does not apply over here. So here is an explanation. In the kurvanti, in this stage 842, 8324 can apply. But 8324 gets precedence as it exists in comparison with 841 because of 821, kurvatra siddham. Now after we apply 8.3.24, we get this form, Kurvanti with an Anuswara. In this stage 8.4.1 cannot apply because there is no Na, there is an Anuswara. Now 8.4.58 has the scope of application, so it applies and we get the form Kurvanti with Na as the substitute. At this stage 8.4.1 cannot apply as the output of 8.4.58 cannot be the input for 8.4.1 because of the Adhikara Purvatra Siddham. This is how the word Kurvanti which is an exception is derived. No retroflex. Similarly Sanjaya Vacha, one would say why not do the Sandhi of A and U and become make it Sanjaya Vacha. No, that is not possible. Sanjaya Vacha is wrong. Why? Because Sanjaya Vacha and this Su gets deleted. So first of all this uh, is changed to Ru, Ru is changed to year by 8.3.17 and year is deleted by 8.3.19. Now after this 8.3.19 gets applied, 6.187 cannot apply as the output of 8.3.19 is non-existent for 6.187. And hence you cannot convert this string into Sanjayo Vacha. If you convert it, it is wrong because of this particular arrangement of rules treating such exceptions. Now Adhikara in 8.3 there is one Adhikara Murdhanyaha which governs this section 8.355 up to 119 and the sutra is Adesha Pratyaya Yoho which means sa which is not at the end of a pada and which comes immediately after in and ku and which is part of a suffix or a substitution is substituted by a retroflex namely sh. So here is the case 
Bhavishyati Sia is a suffix which comes immediately after E over here. So, it changes to Sh. So, we get the form Bhavishyati. And finally, the Adhikara innate 4, Prashabhyam Nonaha. This goes up to 39. What this means is Na, which comes immediately after R and Sh, is substituted by Na if both the substituent and the conditions are in the same Pada. Here is an example Yushan plus us 2, 3, which converts this Yushan into Yushna, A uh, gets deleted. And now this Na comes immediately after Sh, so this Na becomes Na, Yushna as, we get the form Yushna as a result of the application of this rule. And then there are several rules which affect this particular operation. These are the Adhikaras. This is a panoramic view of the Adhikaras in the Ashtadhyayi. I hope it serves the purpose of getting the Vyutpatti. Now before we close, let us have the Mangala Charana, an important Mangala Charana in the tradition which salutes Panini. Yena dhauta gira omsam vimalai shabdavari bhihi tamas chad jnana jam bhinnam tasmai Panina ye namaha. And I repeat, yena dhauta gira omsam vimalai shabdavari bhihi tamas chad jnana jam bhinnam tasmai Panina ye namaha. And we before we close, here are the five sutras. Today we shall recite the five sutras from two padas, 8.1 and 8.2. Here are the five sutras from 8.1. They are Sarvasya Dve, Tasya Paramam Reditam, Anudat Tancha, Nityavip Sayoho and Parer Varjane. I repeat, Sarvasya Dve, Tasya Paramam Reditam, Anudat Tancha, Nityavip Sayoho, and Parer Varjane. Similarly, the five sutras at the beginning of 8.2 are these Purvatra Siddham, Nalopasupswara Saudhnya Subvidhishukriti, Na Mu Ne, Udattasvarita Yor Yanasvarito Nudattasya, and Eka Desha Udattena Udattaha. Repeat Purvatra Siddham. Nalopas subswara saudhnya subvidhishukruti na mu ne udatta svarita yor yana svarito unadattasya and ekadesha udattena udattaha. Thank you for your attention.